built even more, built even more gulags. I mean, people need to know all of the, all of this information. Robert, I want you in the last sort of five yeah, minutes, please. and I'm going to grab it. I'm going to, just going to bring your book to the screen because I'm proud to have this and I look forward to meeting you and I get you to sign it. I've got to read this. But can you talk about, because um, it's just arrived, can you talk about, could you talk about this book? Because you have, you have uh, an interesting, an interesting comment. How culture determined victory and defeat in the Second World War, World War II, the first culture war by yourself. And then we have got the esteemed, this is the ultimate history of World War, Rear Admiral Roger Lane, not CB. What, briefly, in a few minutes, what was your inspiration for, for writing that? And what's the main headline for that? Where where can people find you, buy it, etc.? Go for it, sir. Thank you, Mark. But, yeah, World War Two, the first culture war. It's on, you can get it from Amazon and you can also order it through your through your bookstop, bookshop as well. But basically, the, the, the realisation is that Britain won the Second World War and Britain and her allies, including the United States and the English English speaking world, essentially, uh, because of ideas that were developed within medieval England, things that go back to the Anglo-Saxon uh, Anglo-Saxon times. So we call that English exceptionism, if you like, and I make no bones about that. But the ideas of representative democracy, horizontal lines of control rather than top down governments, bottom up uh, choosing of, of leaders, free markets, private property, sound, sound money, liberty, the in, in an economy built on incentives and inducements. They were the real weapons that were unleashed on the uh, on the, 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 the Nazis, which were national socialists that believed in state control, that had price that had price controls, that took over industry. First, took them into the the uh, Reich, and um, Hermann Göring before all the all industry was put within uh, the. Uh, German Ministry of Defence. They were socialists. They were, uh, of course, it was only socialists if you were the right ethnicity. If yeah. you were the wrong ethnicity, then you would be cheap labour uh, or slave labour to be exploited. Pretty much similar to the vision of some in the in the in the UK and America that want more that want more immigration. And we need to remember that the Nazis were not against immigration. In fact, there was. Germany at the end of the Second World War, despite their extermination of, of Roma, of Sinti, of Jews and other ethnicities, was more ethnically diverse because they took in more people. They took in French factory workers. They took in uh, took in slave labor from uh, East, East, Eastern Europe, put them to work within their industry, cheap labor, essentially. And it's there, there, there's a there's a there's a similarity towards those who want immigration into the UK now. Of course, they're not doing the dreadful things. Not not yet, at least certainly not. And let's hope not. And uh, hopefully that will never, ever happen again. Uh, they won't be able to get away with it. Although, of course, we see in communist China, the uh, persecution of the Uyghur uh, minority. Something uh, as well as also other religious groups. So these things can happen in the modern world. They can actually happen if we're not careful. So basically, we have a the, the Nazis had a system which had based on state control, ex, exploitation, and the Soviets had a similar system, and it didn't work. And they relied on us for their for their weapons, even their oil. They had the they've got the, they had the Caucasus under their control for most of the Second World War, a major oil producing region. Yet to get high octane fuel for, for, for planes, it was easier to take that oil from the Caucasus out through Iran to Britain and to the to the United States to be shipped back to uh, to 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 the Soviet Union to uh, to then be used in, in 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 fighter planes to take on the Luftwaffe. It was easier to do that and cheaper than for the for the Soviets to do it themselves because they didn't have an economy properly based on incentives and inducements, and they didn't have meritocracy. They had an institutionalized uh, system of corruption, uh, a kind of uh, industrialized feudalism, where people were told what to do by, by a manager who was put there, not because he was able, but because he knew yeah. the right people, a corrupt system. 
uh, a nepotism on a on an industrial scale. It's the bigger it's the, the bigger than the corruption of the crime Biden crime family, if you can even even believe that. But but these ideas that were developed made in Anglo-Saxon England, which we explo exported to the United States, made America the great country that it is and with the great ally that it became in the Second World War, the arsenal of democracy that provided so much of the weapons that would be used. And the we've forgotten those values. We've forgotten private the value of private enterprise and competition and have a system which is essentially rigged in favour of those who uh, say the right thing. Social advancement is now reserved for those who are on the right side politically, not for those who are the most able, who can provide the best products, who have the best ideas, who have the best, who have the um, correct facts and the most persuasive arguments. It's about those who are politically on the right side or indeed of the right ethnicity. And that's absolutely shameful. But I think they do that for a reason because they want to put people against each other. But basically, the idea that I realized is that, you know, some people say, oh, it's not uh, battles that win war, it's logistics. Well, actually, it's culture which determines a country's logistics. There's many nations that have uh, the same amount of resources as the United States, for instance, uh, or a course the same population but are unable to have a proper functioning economy is because the United States for instance has the correct culture to have a properly functioning growing economy or at least did before they wanted to change it and England a small nation along with uh, along with the other parts of the United Kingdom Northern Ireland Wales and and, and Scotland is a very small nation yet had such a dramatic effect, not because we had the, the best logistics or the best, uh, most resources. In fact, the reverse. We had a culture of incentives. We had one where there was a profit. We had a professionalised army that was highly trained rather than a mass conscript force. Which Robert, I do it. I do it. I do it. I don't want to stop you in flow, but I am because we're up against the time. But I. But the, but the bless point you. is, we had something very special in England, and we're in danger of throwing it away on the altar of mass migration. We need to preserve this. And the things which gave us victory in the Second World War, we need to understand what exactly that was. We need to okay. understand how we need positive policies to grow our population. Our, our indigenous population needs to be invigorated within the UK. And of course, we need to get our country moving again by restoring our culture and our, and, our, and our values that made us great and that made us unstoppable in the Second World War that we're well, in danger of throwing away. And that's what the book's about. And we need to read about what it is about learning the lessons from the Second World War and applying them to this day and age because we're in a struggle now. Robert, I cannot thank you enough and I want you back, right? I'm going to play us out and thank you so much for joining me. Just stay there. We'll have a conversation afterwards. But bless you. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Let's keep our world in prayer and learning about what's going on. Bless you for joining us.